pole, like firefighters on their way to a fire. At the bottom, there was a bus, and the flower painters hopped in the bus. Katie clambered onto the top. Just then, the colonel came racing up and leaped with a giant leap onto the top of the bus. This is Fred Dignazio. And as you can see, his dramatic storytelling ability has this class of preschoolers spellbound. Now, Fred isn't a teacher, at least not in the usual sense. He's a computer programmer, and right now he's reading from a book that he wrote. It's an adventure story called Katie and the Computer. Katie, come on over here. I want you to see this flower I'm making. Why don't you try it, too? Here you go. Now, the heroine of this story is really Fred's own five-year-old daughter. And the idea for the book was born two years ago, when Katie crawled into his lap and started building an electronic flower on his home computer. Fred imagined that Katie fell through the picture screen and tumbled down into an imaginary land of computer people. The result is a modern-day Alice in Wonderland story, whose real purpose is to teach young children how a computer operates. I think what I'm trying to convey to children is a whole new image of computers. I'm giving them a fresh start with computers. Fred is one of a growing number of scientists and educators who believe that children should be taught to use computers almost as soon as they're taught to speak. Computers are going to be so much a part of even that small child's life that at the same time they're learning to talk, it's not a bad idea for them to learn about computers. The big myth is that since computers were remote, technically obscure things that people were afraid of in the past, people feel, how can you teach a young child about computers? The truth is that today's computers with the ability to talk, make color pictures, to make, play music, are very appealing to children. And the basic techniques of programming and operating the computer are accessible to even the very youngest children. Katie and the other kids in this preschool class are among the first members of what is being called the online generation. Children whose entire education will involve regular exposure to computers for both work and play. Now educators have been talking about putting computers in the classroom for decades. But you see there was a problem. They were just too big, just like the computer here at the Computation Center at UNC. But this is what's revolutionized computer technology. It's a chip, a tiny maze of wires on a piece of silicon. And believe it or not, this chip can do everything that a big computer can do. A chip is the brain that sits deep within the modern microcomputer. Micros appeared on the market about five years ago. And now there are some 50,000 of them in use in schools across the country. OK, what color do you see now? It's green. Right. Which number would be green? Would you push on your keyboard for green? Good. Five-year-old Sally Koo is learning to recognize colors. The computer shows her several different colors, each of which has a number. Now Sally presses a button to pick the correct answer. They changed again. You're going to have to select a new number. Which number? Very good. The same technique is used to teach math and other subjects. They allow a child who is just learning a new concept, say the color red, and to identify that color, to interact with the computer over and over again. In the past, if a teacher were teaching that, or the parent, the teacher or parent would become very impatient, grow discouraged, and in some way or another show their disapproval, and the, the child would get upset, feel they'd fail. The computer, though, is different because it's infinitely patient. Over and over again, the child can, it'll ask the child the same question until the child gets it right. Very good. You did it. Now we have another one. Computerized learning projects get more sophisticated as students get older. These 11th graders here at the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics in Durham can study economics with a computer program called Lemonade. The computer gives them a small amount of startup capital, then puts them into business as lemonade salesmen. Each student has to outwit the weather and his competitors to succeed. The computer calculates costs and profits. If children at a very young age feel this comfortable with computers, this stimulated, this challenged, then I feel that these students 
and young people as they grow older will naturally pick up computers and use them effectively as tools and exploit them to their fullest potential. For all of their advantages, computers do have drawbacks. Some kids become so obsessed with programming and playing games that their social lives come to a halt and their other studies suffer. But scientists say that by the end of the decade, three out of every four new jobs may involve some kind of interaction with a computer. And the people who don't know how to work them will be at a tremendous disadvantage. So Fred Dignazio says the teaching of computer literacy is a must. And for thousands of children like these, it will begin with the story of a little girl named Katie, who dreamed that she fell into a computer.